thanks everybody for the interest in being online with us. Um, I will share with you if it moves on. Yes, it now it moves on. I will share with you the concepts, rationale, and the technique of this really unique system, which uh, <coughs> the heart of, his, of it is a digital ligament balancing tool, and then the robot, who is uh, rather the dummy part of the system, and really the heart is that, ligament, that digital ligament balancing system called the Omnipart system. Okay, let's move on. But it doesn't. All right, here you go. So the omnibody um, consists of three parts, of three components. One part is the navigation. One part is the robot. And the heart of the system is the active spacer. It uses, the omnibotics uses a navigated image-free bone marker. And this digital tensioning device, which analyzes the gap for the entire range of motion, it allows an individualized 3D planning intraoperatively for the thermal component. And then it, the, the data is sent to a robot, and the robot is guided and, and, and performs the cuts for optimal stability and minimal soft tissue release. So the question arises, do we need navigation? Well, we really do not navigation for itself. Maybe the radiograph parameters may be uh, improved, but at the end, there is no difference in functional outcome revision rate of this. So navigation alone is not the key. Is a robot the key? Well, this um, very large study showed that actually the radiographic parameters, there's no difference, and also no difference in functional scores losing survival and complication. So what makes the difference? And what do we need? The difference in our result makes a balanced need. If you compare unbalanced versus balanced knees, the study shows that in an unbalanced group of patients, 20%, with more than 20% are the unsatisfied patients, whereas in a balanced group, only 3% are unsatisfied. So this is really a key issue, a balanced need. And we know from several biomechanic studies of implant position affects balance, particularly inflection, that implant position affects kinematics, and this unbalanced knees, particularly inflection, do have clinical consequences. One problem we have arose because we mixed mechanical and atomic line concepts. Measured resection technique at the femur, uh, perpendicular uh, tibial cut at the tibia, and this created this trapezoidal flexion gap. We try to uh, compensate that by uh, rotating a thermal component by three degrees externally, but still we did not achieve a uh, balance, uh, balance in every case. Why? Because that three degrees um, of medial tibial inclination is only an average. And if you go one standard deviation up and down, you already changes your medial tibial inclination. If you go two standard deviations, up and down, you end up with these that are that have a six degrees of varus or even a, a zero degrees of varus valgus uh, at the tibial at the tibial side. This is the concept that also has been introduced very recently by Johan Dalamans that constitute that the, the, the knees have a constitutional alignment. We try to overcome that and to compensate that by sticking to other bony landmarks, but even, sticking, even choosing the AP axis, you end up with uh, about 10, 20% of unbalanced function and using the transit condor axis. Still, not all knees will be balanced, but probably. One solution to the problem, 
could be tensors. Um, there are a variety of tensors out there. Not very successful. Why? Because they were rigid and um, did not really give us a good, a good insight into the ligamentous tensions, tension of the knee. There are more sophisticated tensors out there, like this hydraulic tensor. But the problem with this was also that it was static. So until now, we were only able to analyze the gas in a static manner, in extension, and in flexion. Now, the solution to that is now a digital analyzer, a digital gap analyzer that is dynamic, and this dynamic digital gap analyzer can analyze the gaps throughout the whole range of motion. It distracts the gap at a constant force, and the forces of the lig ligament contract this uh, tension. The pedals are independent, so the middle and lateral gap are measured independently. And this um, analyzer is inserted into the uh, extension gap, and then it goes into flexion. I'll show you this in a second. So this is really the heart of the onibody system. This active spacer, it is navigated and sends the data to the robot. The robot is only the dummy part. He only carries out what the active spacer tells him to do. It starts with navigation. The pins are inserted to the middle incision, an extra incision for the pins for the tibia. The hip center is determined. very fast, only takes less than a minute. Once you dare, then a CT and MRI free bone morphing is um, performed. I'll show you this intraoperatively. Here is an example at the anterior cortex. It's very fast. All the bony landmarks are digitized with this bone morphing, and then the system allows a validation of the 3D model in real time. So you can see whether there are any errors, and you can correct and go in and morph the knee again if it's necessary. Never, ne it was never necessary, it's, uh, it, it's uh, actually pretty accurate. And then you analyze the knee. Without having done any cuts, the knee shows the alignment throughout the whole range, how, throughout the whole uh, range of motion. Then the tibial cutting guide is uh, pinned to the tibia, and then you adjust your tibial cut and you decide what kind of tibial cut. Whether you cut zero, you cut the three degrees of of, of virus or, or or any constitutional virus. That's your decision. And then the balance spot is introduced into the gap. And again, the whole range of motion is, is analyzed at the constant force. And you will see what the gaps, how the gaps are performing and how the alignment is performed after having cut tibia. The femur hasn't been cut yet. Now, we start from there. You see this intraoperatively. In real time, how the alignment changes throughout range of motion and how the distraction of the gaps. We're not interested in a compression. We're interested in distraction, which will show us the ligamentous laxity independently of the middle and the lateral side. So this is this case intraoperatively. That what that's what uh, g gave us um, uh, gave us this curve, the analysis with the digital uh, tension device. And now you can tell the robot, we call this an auto balance, to choose for you the best world. Okay. So in this case, um, 
the, the, the robot chose and you could scan two degrees of flexion, a size three plus, and the resection levels, which you can see here in green. And if, if then the fever is cut with these parameters that the robot suggests to you, and that the, that the computer suggests to you, you will get this kind of curve and this uh, alignment. The, the, green, the green rectangular um, rectangles are the alignment, and the, and the line, um, the two lines are the gaps. If you don't like this, you can do your own adjustments, so you can over right the computer. Just like navigation, have you, driving a car, you can override. So here I said, okay, let's see what happens if I increase my insert from 10 to 11. See what happened? What happened with the curve? Now we get a, um, a flexion gap, which is too tight. Uh, and you, you can see that with, with this red, the red line uh, at the end of the, of, the, of the curve, the bottom of the curve. You don't like this, you can do your next adjustment. For instance, we will now move the femur as a virtual case. We move the femur uh, anteriorly. See that? That means we cut more posterior condyle. Now, this has this impact on the, on the two lines. See? So, we, um, we corrected now the flexion. So, we don't have such a tight flexion anymore. Can do some more adjustments. We now moved. We now moved the femoral component proximally, so we're cutting more. We're cutting now more distal femur. What did we create with that? We created a kind of mid flexion stability. So we can now really analyze not only statically the extension and flexion, we see what happens also in mid-flexion. Something we never, we knew from, from biomechanical studies, we knew for, theoretically, but we never were actually um, um, uh, capable of, of depicting that. We don't like that. We'll correct this. Now we go back with the thermal component, so we, 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 uh, we go more distally to the thermal component. We haven't done any cuts yet. This is all virtual. We're planning the thermal component position. See, we have moved the thermal component again a little bit more distally, and this narrows the, the, the lateral and the middle gap and, and compensates for the reflection stability. If we like that, we send the data to the robot. We're going to do this in real time. We'll see what happens with the curve now. By moving, by changing every single parameter, we change various values position. We go now into two degrees various, three degrees values, four degrees values. You see what happens with the curve. The extension gets too narrow, so we go back and change it again. You see what happens if you change rotation. Rotation has an impact on the inflection. Do you see what happens with the curve at the bottom? Either the middle or the lateral side opens up if we change the patient. Something you never been able to really to really see, but what happens if we change flexion extension of the femoral component? It changes a lot. A, a couple of degrees opens or closes the flexion gap significantly. It's amazing. Of course, the size has an impact. On, on the on the on the uh, on the, um, the flexion gap. Go back here at the size four. We don't like this, and we go back to size three. And once we're happy, once we're happy, we freeze that and say, okay, we're happy with these gaps. We freeze that, and and then this goes to the robot. Okay. This goes to the robot. At this point, the robot gets assembled. The same pins that uh, are for the navigation. The robot gets the same pins where the navigation has been, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, pinned. Here from another view, you have to line up your robot with the planning. And it's very stable, and now 
you calibrate the robot, and once it's calibrated, it goes into the disk position, and you, as a surgeon, cut. I don't need the robot to cut it. The robot is only for the position of the cut. And that's the important thing. Whether the robot cuts or I'm cutting, I don't think this makes a true difference. The difference is where do you cut, and 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 with these cuts, the the ligamentous balance is uh, determined. To validate that people your your distal femoral cut. And then the robot moves on and goes to the to the um, anterior cortex, and then you cut the cortex. We'll show that this to you uh, with an animation: the distal femoral cut, and then you validate this cut. And if you're happy, you tell the robot to move on, and it goes to the anterior cut, and this anterior cut, which is parallel to the posterior cut, determines your rotation, which has a huge impact on your ligamentous stability and flexion. This has all been determined by the digital balance, by the digital um, tension device, and the robot goes only to the position where you told him to go. And then you insert your, your femoral trial. The tibia is still um, with the resection. You insert again the balance, the balance analysis, and you see what you got. You see the result, whether this is what you actually planned for and whether you have a nice and stable knee from extension to flexion. All right, as a summary here, the Omni is a navigated imagery bone marking system, no MRI, no CT. The heart of the system is this digital tensioning device for the entire range of motion. Now we're able to also pick up what's happening uh, during mid-flexion, and we, we can adjust that, for instance, by placing the femur more distally, more proximal, or, or even changing the flexion extension, um, the flexion extension position of the femur. We were not able to do that. We were not able to analyze it. Now we know what happens if you go into more flexion or more extension with the femoral component. So this is an individualized 3D planning intraoperatively for the femoral component. And the robot is only the dummy part. He only carries out what has been told, what, uh, what um, you told him to do. And the goal is optimal stability and minimal soft tissue release. All right, I have here the case, but I think now that uh, if there are any questions at this point, we can answer the question to the, to the rationale and the technique, and that will go through a, through a case with the x-rays, see what we did, and see how, uh, how yeah. then, uh, we ended up with, with the implant and, uh, on the x-ray. Brian? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, uh, Professor Romero. So um, just to, as a reminder, there are a few questions that have come in, um, but everyone is, is and welcome and encouraged to type any questions they may have or comments in the chat box. Uh, you can send them directly to me, and we can uh, we can pose them to Professor Romero. Um, but just one point of clarification. It looked like a lot of your early experience, what you were showing, was um, was with the apex knee. Uh, so just a point of clarification. So the omnibotic system was originally developed uh, with the and the balance spot with the apex knee um, out of from Omni out of the U.S. Um, and historically, it's been uh, in just a few geographies uh, around the world. Uh, and, and more recently, you've you've uh, started using Unity with it as well. Um, and we also have this product, although we won't show it in these slides. We have the HLS Knee Tech, which is primarily in France, also available on this on the system. Uh, so just to clarify that. Um, so, yeah, one uh, one question was um, just what, can you talk about your learning curve maybe in, in this system? You've had a lot of experience in navigation and robotics before, but what's been your learning curve for this system? Well, the, the, if you have some experience with navigation, the navigation part is, 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 is uh, very straightforward, uh, like all the other navigation uh, systems. 
the ro to the robot to to assemble the robot it's uh, it's very easy it is stable and that this is not the, the complicated part the part that needs some learning curve is to realize what data and what the digital balance is giving you since I've been using a balancer for the last 15 years so my personal learning curve was very short but I believe that if you're not familiar with using a, 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 a gap distractor which will tell you the difference in, in, in a, of the gaps of the medial and lateral gaps in extension and inflection um, if, if you don't have any experience of that that is the part of the learning curve and maybe but but since the, since the since the digital balancer um, gives you the information and gives you a a, a suggestion um, then it, it it really becomes easy because you don't have to make the, the, the primary decisions the digital balancer is making the primary decisions gives a suggestion and if you have it for that and in most part in, in, in the majority of the cases, it gives you the best world between alignment and balance. And, and you have to decide what alignment. Do you want to stick to, a, to a, a very strict mechanical alignment? Then you may have to do something at the ligament. If you go more into a, uh, more into a uh, um, kinematic alignment or constitutional alignment, the type of thing, then you may have to do less on the ligaments. And this is this is the, the, the learning curve to, to play around with the, with the, with the digital balancer that gives you that, that, that gaps. Uh, excellent. Thank you for that. So in that time, I had a few other questions come in. Um, so one in particular about the the so-called third gap, right? So the patellofemoral joint. Um, how do you manage that? And does the system? And the system doesn't give you any any information on the patella um, inherently because we don't have a raise on that. But how do you manage that um, the femoral space? Well, um, we don't at this point we don't get any information about the patella femoral yet, and this is certainly something that has to be looked into, and, and we'll see whether we can kind of introduce that to it. But if you kind of more stick to the anatomy of the patient, you will see that that case one we will, we will um, uh, go through. If you, stay, if you stay more to the anatomy and do not um, sacrifice that, that, that tetal medial inclination and, and the position of the femur, and you stick more to the anatomy, the patellofemoral joint has not been a problem. So I do not do any lateral releases. The patellofemoral um, tracking really becomes nicer if you stick if you stick to the anatomy okay and we have a few questions on um, how you manage soft tissue releases if you do soft tissue releases um, do you do you manage them first or go straight to the, the planning um, you know can you just speak about how you where soft tissue releases and even managing the osteophytes plays into your workflow with this device See, but before before I had this, I I um, was um, pretty much um, cutting LTD at um, at 90 degrees, and from there comes the problem that you have to do so many releases. Now, if you again here stick more to the anatomy and respect that medial inclination, reproduce that medial inclination, then you avoid those soft tissue balance. And since I'm using the system and uh, and respect more that 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 anatomy, the constitutional anatomy of the patient, I do not need to do any releases anymore or very very um, very um, minor releases. So the question doesn't arise anymore to me. Well, I was a big fan of, of, of big releases, perpendicular cut, gap, rectangular gap in expansion, rectangular gap in flexion, and then you have to, you, have to you, you need your releases. Now, by respecting the anatomy, the constitutional anatomy, 
by using the digital balancer, which will give you a, a, a very nice position of the femoral component, the need for soft tissue releases has been, has been reduced significantly. Okay, good. And then um, we, we did finally, we finally got the million dollar question, which I knew was coming, uh, or maybe the million Swiss franc question, I don't know. Uh, but the question is, how much force do you put in the tension device? So now we're able to control the force. Um, how do you determine your, your force that you use? And do you vary that? Do you vary that um, in a way? I, I, uh, I have done um, with the hydraulic analyzer that I developed just ago, several um, um, cadaver studies, and using that tensor, I was using 100 in extension, one Newton extension, and 180 in flexion. Now with this, I reduced this distraction force, and I'm using now about 70 to 80 in extension, and about 50 to 60 in flexion. But I think the, book is, the books are not closed yet, and, uh, and we'll have to do, I know that other people are using much less force. Um, it works for me now at about 70 to 80, and about 50 to 60 in extension, 60 to 60 in, in, uh, in flexion. But again, the books are not closed, and we will need to uh, look more into detail. Okay, great. Um, so we're, we will get a few more questions. I think a few more have popped in, but I think uh, I know you have a case study here that you want to go over, and then we can have another break for, for more questions. So do please keep sending your questions in, and we'll, we'll pose them uh, shortly. Okay, so this is a, this is a case. Um, this is a 73-year-old man. He has a, a flexion of 125 degrees, and he has a flexion contraction of 10 degrees clinically when I measure it when I'm lying in, 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 on a couch. And the long-standing x-rays show a mechanical axis of 10 degrees varus, and the, tibial, uh, and the medial tibial inclination is 6 uh, degrees. This is a case I did in November, um, 7, November 7, 2019, as Brian mentioned with the Omni knee, uh, to, to, uh, until, uh, until February, January, February, the, uh, the Omni was only available for the system. Now, as Brian told you, the, um, also the, the Unity system is possible to perform with the, with the Omni. So, I'll be using an omni uh, uh, for this case. And I decided to cut the tibia at four degrees of varus. I measured the six degrees of tibial inclination. So I compensated, let's say, two degrees for, for, the, for, the, for the cartilage. And, and I decided to cut the tibia at four degrees. This is the pre-op um, kinematics after the incision, after inserting the pin and the navigation. Uh, it gives us um, it shows me that the, the knee has a 8 degrees of varus in, in, uh, in extension, and, and these green rectangles are manually, because I don't have a gap yet, I haven't resected, manually, mid and lateral um, laxity dynamically um, throughout the whole range of motion. So this, as you see, the, the, the knee gets, gets uh, gets stiff in inflection and it's more lax in extension. So I cut the tibia at uh, four degrees of varus, as I told you, and with a four degrees uh, posterior slope. Now I have a gap and I'm able to, uh, to introduce the, the digital um, tensioner. I distract the knee, as you can see, at 80 Newton in extension. In this case, because um, it was pretty tight in inflection, I decided to go for 80, 80 newtons inflection as well, as you can see here. And at the right side, you see the two blue lines. Um, it, shows, it shows exactly what, what we saw before. It is actually more, the gaps are, are wider in extension and a bit narrower in flexion. And, and uh, with the, the green, the green bars show uh, the, uh, the alignment. 
And now I hit onto this button, where well, you can see auto in the middle of the screen at the bottom at, 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 the, at the bottom of the button of the of the screen. You see auto. This is the auto balance. I hit on that, and then the uh, the system gives me a suggestion. All right, and I can I can um, choose the the boundary. So I said. And you see the at the right side the green um, rectangles, the green bars. I said, okay, I initially starting well, I don't want to have more than three degrees overall various alignment. Having said that, the computer said, okay, but if this is your compromise, then your gaps will be um, will, will show like that. So you see the two blue the two blue lines that are outside. The, the the boundaries of laxity that I would accept. This is okay. If I don't like that, I can choose that. I can make my own adjustments. See, the computer says if you stick to three degrees of overall alignment in extension, you will be a little loose and will have to use an insert of 14. And I don't want to have an insert of 14. And maybe I accept a bit more virus because the patient has a constitutional virus. So I make an adjustment and, and go down from an insert of 14 to an insert of 12 and make some other changes. I resected less of the posterior condyles. I changed the flexion and I resected less of the tibia. And that's the result of the curve now. As you can, yeah, and again, you see now the green rectangles, the green bars, that now in extension, I am more than three degrees of varus, and I'm about four degrees of varus, or four and a half. I accept this because the patient has a constitutional, constitutional varus. I accepted this in favor of a balanced knee throughout flexion and extension throughout the whole range of motion without the need of any uh, of any soft tissue release. That may answer the question, at what point do I do a soft tissue release? The, the, the answer is, I avoid any soft tissue release by changing my cuts within a certain boundary that, that I will accept. All right? And then, I, uh, and then the, the system tell, shows me at the end how the femoral component sits on the femur with um, the, the cuts I decided, two degrees of flexion, uh, nine and 10 degrees at the posterior condyle, six and seven degrees at the distal femur. And this will give this alignment. It will give um, these, uh, the, these two curves on the, on the medial and left side, which show, which show the gaps um, in a dynamic way from, from full extension to, uh, to flexion. And if I say, okay, I go with this, then I send, I send the data to the robot and the robot will cut. Here, no cut has been performed so far. This is all planning intraoperatively with the computer after having gathered the data uh, by, the, by the ligament tension. And now, I cut, I put a femoral trial in, and again I insert the digital balancer and I, and, I, and I analyze the result. This is the final stability assessment. It shows that the, the, the alignment is a bit more than three degrees in extension. It goes a little bit back up to three degrees in 30, 40 degrees of flexion and becomes again various inflection. And the two lines show me the gap, show me the, the gaps. And okay, this is what I got at this point. If at this point now I had any imbalance that I or the robot or the digital balance was not able to compensate for with the cuts at this point, Okay, at this point, I could do any uh, uh, releases. But remember, the studies of uh, Ken Cracker show that if you do 
any release that affects your extension, it will affect your flexion differently. So that's why I don't I don't like to do any release at this point after having done all the cuts. So if you need to do any release, the release should be done before the cuts because it is impossible to do any release that will affect extension and flexion in the same way. These biomechanical studies have been performed by Ken Krakow about 20 years ago. All right, and then um, this shows now that you can now put all the, all the, all the, all the, you, you take out the, the, the trial implant and put in the, uh, the, 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 the components, femoral component, the, the definitive femoral component, tibial component, and the insert, and then you can again perform a, an alignment, a, a um, dynamic alignment final assessment, and that's your final result. At this point, you cannot put, once you have put the, the definitive components in, you cannot put the, the, the digital balance in it because you have a tibial insert in there, the, 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 the real tibial insert, and you, have, you don't have a gap for the, for, for the, for the digital balancer. At the end, at the very end, with the, with the, with the components in, you can uh, perform a alignment final um, uh, assessment. Okay, so this is a summary here. Um, the tip was cut at four degrees of varus. The end result was a five degrees varus mechanical axis with a trial femur and the balance spot in. This was reproduced by a five degrees various mechanical legs with the implant, see, were about the, 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 the most, the most, uh, the, the, the green rectangular uh, rectangle at the top is about, is at about five degrees. It gives us the total um, um, mechanical uh, alignment, which is five degrees here, which reproduces to a certain extent the constitutional alignment of the, of the patient. And this was achieved by cutting the femur at one degree of varus, at one degree of external rotation, we distalized the femur by two millimeters, so we, we resected it at seven millimeters, and, and the femoral component um, is at two degrees of flexion. And this was achieved, then we achieved a balanced knee throughout the whole range of motion with no releases. Any question so far? Well, that was a, a good Hello? summary of a, a, a nice various case. Uh, um, so, yep, can you hear me okay? Yep. Professor Romeo? Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. I hear you. Question, <laughs> question in. Um, so, uh, um, Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So a question question is about um, how you manage a difficult or uh, a damage, and and also another question about um, are there patients or clinical situations where you you wouldn't want to use this device? What was the first question? Uh, how would you manage a damaged PCL? A damaged PCL. A damaged PCL. Well, you can you can use a PS name. You can use a you can use a PSNA or a more conform or a more conforming um, um, insert. You can you can also you can also measure you can also measure what's what, what's happening with your gaps. And you can and you can actually switch to a uh, to a PCE if if uh, if you have if you have then uh, intraoperatively you see that you have a uh, too much um, uh, APL laxity. And of course, if you have knees that are very unstable that are that, that are um, that the middle or lateral collateral rhythm is incompetent, um, or you have cases where the patient is, is very lax, a hyperlax patient with hyperextension, then you might switch to a more constrained knee. I mean, the, the principles of total knee orthoplasty do not change with that, you know. It, 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 the, the, the principles, you don't have to change the principles. The, the goal of this to improve, improve the outcome um, of still those patients, and we know those patients, I'm talking about these 20% of patients that are unsatisfied 
with this to to be a, a further step in improving the outcome of those patients for all normal cases. Of course, if you have patients that are these that are completely incompetent ligament device, then you 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 have to apply the principles that you learned from total knee off. That's good. And if you do need to make a soft tissue release, um, when would you say the ideal moment is? And and do you then, you know, would you then reassess that situation with the balance button? Yeah. Okay. So if um, without so you cut the tibia, you need to cut the tibia to assess the weight. So you have to you cut the tibia and then you put the balance button. And then the 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 the, 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 the computer suggests you something. Right? We saw that. And then before you do any ligament release, then you, pl- you can play around with the cuts and the angles and the alignments. And if you don't get and if you don't get it right, let's say you just don't get in a valgus knee, even in a, con- in a in contract valgus knee, you don't get that lateral compartment. Um, you can't you can't open that lateral compartment by by recutting um, this situation before you cut the femur. Then you go and do your ligament releases, and then you insert again the the, the balance spot and do the same thing again. You go from flexion to extension and see what 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 uh, what results now. How how the curves show after having done your your uh, your your releases. So. I, I would not do the, the releases at the end. This is not a good thing to do. Cheap your cut, analyze the gaps, see what the computer says, what suggestions the computer gives, see whether you override the parameters and you get a better, a bet, better curves by overriding the computer. And if you don't, then you take out the digital balancer and then you do your ligament releases, as you know, on the middle side for varus, on the lateral side for varus, posterior lateral, pie crescent, whatever you learn, uh, will not go into details um, what kind of ligament releases you have to do. Well, I'm talking here when you have to do ligament releases. So after tibial cut, you don't get it right with the chest of the computer. You don't get it right with the, with the, with your, with your, um, changing your parameters. You take out the digital balancer. You do your, your, your releases. You insert again the digital balancer. Run the flexion extension again and see what curves you got now. Good. That, I think. Can um, I answer the question? Yeah, I would. I would say so. I think at this point we can um, we can switch over to uh, another case. Um, I'll I'll switch over to my sharing, and then uh, we we can go through the live demonstration tool, which is the flight simulator. Now, if people can give you their suggestions, say, okay, I will change this or I will change that. Yep. So let me do this. I, uh, I turn, yep. I turn off my, uh. No, I think your, your video is still good. You'll be, you'll be talking through these. So we should all see now. Uh, your case number three, that was the valgus deformity, the x-ray there. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you I want to talk us through this, and then we can we'll switch to the flight simulator. Yep, looks good. Yep, we can see it. We can see it. You can speak to it. Okay. So this is a valgus case, uh, two hips uh, are in there, it's a valgus fifty contract, the 79-year-old male, flexion 105 degrees, flexion contraction 20 degrees, 20 degrees flexion contraction, long-standing x-ray 9 degrees of valgus. The medial tibial inclination typically is 1.5 degrees, so it's less than you would expect. No, it's, it's what you would expect in a valgus knee. It has less, less medial inclination than in a varus knee. Um, on this knee, I performed an omni um, January and January this year. And in this case, I decided to cut the tibia at three degrees 
at zero degrees very well. So in this case, I performed a perpendicular trivial cut. I did not, I, 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 um, I, um, um, corrected the slight middle inclination to zero. Well, that, that will help me to open that lateral, um, that lateral gap in extension. You can see from the x-ray that, 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 that there is a, a tight lateral, lateral gap. All right. Go ahead. Now we do a real time, uh, a real time modification of this case. Real time adjustment. Yep. So here's your pre op kinematics from the system. Yeah, that's the pre op kinematics of the system, exactly, without having done any cut. See the, 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 the uh, show, show this again. Uh, can you go back, Brian? Okay, see, that's what the navigation says. Okay, the navigation says that the overall alignment is three degrees of valgus, and that clinically, the patient had a, a 20 degrees flex contracture. The, the navigation um, is more accurate and, and says, okay, the, the, the flexion contraction is not 20 degrees, but it's 16 degrees. But that 20 degrees was a, was a clinical um, a measurement. So it's more accurate, and also the, the overall mechanical axis uh, that is uh, in three degrees of valgus. That is on the left side. You see um, the, the, the green bars again. The green bars that go from top to, to the bottom with with a spot in with the, the, the dark the, the the black spot in the middle is is the uh, is the alignment, and the bar the bar is the uh, is the laxity is the laxity. Uh, at different uh, uh, flexion angles. Okay. Okay. Um, we decided to, we decided to, to cut the the the, the tibia at, at zero degrees perpendicular. It's a valid knee. Remember, four degrees of posterior slope. And then Brian's going to show you how you can move up and down. And, and, and do your adjustments now. Maybe you can go up and down a little bit with the resection level. Yep, that was uh, that was the, I shifted it from nine from the high side down to seven. As the, All right, this was validated. On the typical side, again um, for the audience. On the table side, you decide, not the computer. On the table side, you decide what you're going to do. So you have to have a clear idea what angle, at what angle, um, if you look at, at, at the mechanic axis of the tibia, what angle you're going to reject your, your, your tibia. At, at three degrees of barriers, five degrees, or at zero, or whatever. And, and the posterior, and the, and the resection level. That's your decision. The computer's not going to tell you that. But it's, it's crucial because you start from there. All right? All right, that, um, now you validate that? Or you, you, you move, you move, uh, you move ahead? All right, you move, you move, uh, okay, we move the hand. And now, um, here you see, um, here you see now, um, the, ana the analysis with the, with the ligament tension, um, 80 degrees, um, Newton in extension and 60 degrees Newton flexion. So it goes from, it goes, um, from, so you go from flexion to extension, it changes the distraction force, um, from 80 to 60. Oh, go go back, go back, Ryan. Go back, Ryan. You're too fast. Sorry, it's back. You should see it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so the tibia has been cut. The femur has not been cut. Digital um, and the balance spot has been introduced, and we analyzed the gaps dynamically from flexion extension. You see that the, again the green bars. With a with a black dot in the middle shows the alignment from from extension to flexion and and the and the, and the two um, lines the blue lines 
show the gap. Okay. So again, that's that's to start. And now we're, we'll do an auto balance, right? Yeah, so I've taken that off to show through the steps and we can this is this is the alignment if it was purely mechanical. Exactly. So if we if we tell if we said to the, the computer, okay, we want a um that's my philosophy, let's say I want a knee that has a mecha straight mechanical line from extension to flexion. And then, okay, if you want this, your gaps are going to look like that. And I say, well, my gaps are too tight in extension. Maybe okay in flexion, but they are too tight in extension. I'll say, okay, now I, 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 I don't like that, so I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept some values, and I go now to, let's say, what, 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 what would the audience, what would the audience suggest? Okay, now, Brian is doing it. He said, okay, I'm going to accept we're going to accept a two degrees, a two degrees of values, all right? That improves a little bit our gaps, but uh, not, not enough, all right? Now, what would be, what would be a solution to that now? Any suggestions? Sure. Let's yeah. let's say let's let's open let's open our uh, let's open our distal um, gap our our gap in extension. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm open to get an extension. But now we have, we may have, we may have uh, a, uh, a too tight, a too tight posterior lateral gap. We can change rotation. Ch change rotation to see what happens, uh, Brian. Very good. A bit more? All right. And now, one solution could be, in that, say, to increase, um, to, to resect more the posterior condyles, to open up a little bit our, our, our flexion gap. To do is resect more, resect more posterior condyles, for instance. See, we we'll open that up. All right. All right. And now, and now, what could be done is, yeah, exactly, um, to, um, to um, adjust the flexion of the component. You flex the component a bit. Mm -hmm. More. Right, that may be too much if you go back to one degree. Yeah, see what happens. I mean, this is very interesting. We were not able to depict that. We were not able to pick that up um, if, if you change the flexion, the thermal component. And, and it, it really, a lot happens with the knee if you only change a, a, a couple of degrees flexion extension. I like, I like, I like more extension more with me, Brian. If you go back to extension. All right, go back. Okay. All right, now at this point, either now we say, okay, we accept that and do not touch ligaments, or um, you have still eight degrees 
of um, eight degrees of um, and a, a, a gap of eight, which might give us a, a bit of too tight extension. We can we can adjust the valgus and go to three degrees of valgus. And if you don't like that, hardcore kinematic alignment guys would say, I don't care. If you go to three degrees of valgus if you're not if you're not if you're not following this philosophy, maybe at this point you would need to uh, to uh, do some kind of uh, minor releases of your posterior your post collateral cats to open that up. So, so I think we've we've gotten a pretty good uh, pretty good setup here, and just in the interest of time, people are starting to have to to switch to other meetings. I do want to uh, show the uh, the beauty of the auto bound. So this was a great exercise to show how you've your, your thought process of what you can manipulate. Um, but as you alluded to early on, the auto balance is, is there as a great starting tool if you want to speak to that maybe. Yeah. If you stick to the, the auto balance, the majority of the cases, you will not need to do any. We, we, pick, we pick cases that show a little bit the beauty of overriding um, the systems and playing around the parameters. But in your regular case, usually if you hit the auto balance, it will give you the best world between alignment and gap performance. And that's and that's the goal. Without without the need of messing around with the soft tissues. And I was a fan, I was really a fan. I, I really a fan and, and, and of of of, of uh, having of releasing even deep release in the middle side to really have this this balance in extension and flexion. But with this system, we learn that that with minor adjustments, which the auto balance gives you to start with, with minor adjustments, you can avoid in most of the cases the releases. So, so we're getting a few more questions in. Um, I can show, I'll pop up the, your final slides from this case. If you want to speak to these sort of final x-rays as it was executed clinically. And then, yeah. and then maybe we can take a few other uh, questions as they're coming in. Right. Um, so, um, so again, the tibia was cut at zero degrees, as you can see here, and we, we, we achieved that goal. And uh, in the final mechanical axis, um, but the final um, the interesting thing is with the balance plot, the balance plot shows us a three degrees mechanical axis in, in, in Valgus, but with, with the implants, then we achieved uh, the um, a zero, more or less a three degrees. And this was achieved with the femoral cut at two degrees of Valgus, one degree of external rotation, and four degrees of flexion. All right. Um, any questions? Yeah, no, that was great. So, yes. Um, so, auto balance seems to be very intriguing. I think most people are, are interested in that, uh, getting them <laughs> doing a lot of that, that decision making. Question was about if auto balance can be individualized according to your own philosophy. Uh, essentially, can, can we optimize auto balance further for the, the perfect balance, and how, how do we see that? Well, well, your your philosophy your philosophy starts your philosophy starts with a tibial cut. You know, either you are you you stick with your perpendicular cut and that's what you learn, that's what you want to do, or you kind of start adapting a bit more that a constitutional um, alignment concept, and that's that's you you decide that. And there's where your your philosophy starts. Where, where do you where do you cut your tibia? And and then you start from there. And if you let's say, if you let's say, um, and then the, the balance the balance part will give you will give you the actual situation. And then you do the auto balance. And at this point, if you let's say you like to have more laxity on your lateral side. Some concepts and some uh, some concepts uh, are telling us to to leave more more lateral laxity. Then 
you can say you can override the computer and say, okay, let's shift that that uh, curve a little bit more to the open to the open lateral side. You can adapt your philosophy. Okay. There was a question about um, again choosing the forces um, that you had. Uh, what is the point of clarification? The question was why why it was 80 newtons on the lateral side and, and 80 or 60 on the medial side. Um, in fact, those buttons, just to clarify, it's extension versus flexion. Yeah. So right now no, it's just... Like we, have the same, we have the same force on the medial and lateral side, but we, but we can adjust different forces of flexion and extension. Yeah. And, and if, you like to have your, if you like to have your, your... This is also something you can decide. If you like to have your flexion with a little bit more laxity, then you that that's why you choose less force for flexion. But medial lateral is strict the same. But then for the balance button. But then by adjusting as, as, by playing around with the parameters, then you can open your lateral uh, gap if you like to do that. Good. Um, question about tibial rotation. So, can you walk us through your how you um, how you set that for this system? Well, you cannot. Um, there is not a tool where we where we choose the tibial rotation, but uh, we we digitize that with bone morphing, the center and, and the posterior, the, the, the PCL, and then you set your you set your rotation the way you are you. Um, you, you, you like or the way your philosophy is, uh, either um, anterior cortex or or, or, or PCL to 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 to, to anterior torosity. This is not strict given by um, by your um, by by the system. Okay. Um, another question on so after the learning curve. So far. Uh, okay. so, well, 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 yeah. Actually, have to look into this into this problem a, a, bit, a bit closer in the future. Sure. Um, so the question on time, so OR time. So after you've gone through your learning curve and you're comfortable with the system, um, how much time difference would you say is there with with the full balance bot tool versus a standard surgery? I mean, this is only the 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 the, the time you lose by pitting navigation. By assembling the robot, and that's all, and by and by determining your 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 femoral head, it is not more than any other navigation system because because for for me because I was using a balancer anyway, so I was analyzing the extension, my flexion gap, and going back and forth, and I would say that that time you 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 might lose by pinning your navigation, assembling your robot, you might win that time. Because you will need to do less releases. So my my surgical time I, I was losing in my clinical and daily practice were analyzing the gaps and and since I had the only in steady in, steady in extension and flexion, I was introducing my, my, my balancer and then analyzed and I say okay I have to re release this. That was doing sequential releases. I, I did a superficial release on let's say on the medial side. I put the balancer in again. I measured again. I said, oh god, it's not enough. I take it out. I I I release again. At this time, I gained that time. So this time I don't lose that time anymore. And and this compensates for the time that you might lose assembling the navigation, and you don't lose more time. But if you were not using, if you were a, a a uh, strict bony alignment surgeon by really then of course then it will, you will, you I don't know you may you may lose uh, those twenty minutes by 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 pinning in the navigation and then by analyzing the the the, the robot for me I did not lose that much time because I was doing that ligament balancing analysis with the, with the with the balancer anyway. Would you is it, is it fair to say that um, again for these demonstrations that we're giving we're we're walking through all of the different function functions that are available um, would you say that clinically the amount of time you spend analyzing the situation really depends on on you and your preferences right if you if, if auto balance works well and, and you're happy to move on 
you go on. But if you really want to refine it, you that's that's up to you. So and 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 you exactly and you you gain you win time because you don't have to do all these different releases and reanalyze, and, and then you only lose your time. I don't know, ten minutes or so by by pinning the navigation as as uh, as in any navigation system. But the the time you lose with the ligand balancer is very short. If you put it in, you go on flexion extension, it gives you the curve, you hit and out the balance. If you're happy with that, it's done. No, no thank you very much. Good. Um, so it looks like the questions are coming to an end, unless anyone has uh, any last last few comments. So lots of comments of, of thanks coming through. I think everyone seems to have enjoyed the, the session. Um, but if there are any other questions, please do write them in. Uh, if not, again, I just want to thank thank you very much, Professor Romero, for your time. And uh, and again, everybody on the call today today joining. Um, especially, you know, in this unique time in our world, I think hopefully everyone's staying safe and um, and taking care of your loved ones. And glad that we could we could join join this activity today. So again, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks to Corin for putting up this session and 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 really putting everything together, uh, putting the pieces together. And it was uh, it was it, it was fun. And um, thanks a lot for you guys all joining the session. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, if you want to see the surgery live in my OR, please uh, get in touch with Corinne, and uh, we'll have you come over uh, once uh, we start again with the uh, normal, normal surgery uh, after lockdown, and uh, please, uh, you're welcome to join and to see the surgery um, in the OR, and you will see, then you will see the, the, the unique uh, system and the beauty of the system and 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 I, I tell you, I, I learn every day more. Even though I I thought I knew quite a lot using using those sensors, but now we really see more because we see the knee, um, the performance of the knee dynamically before having done any cut in the femur, and that's the point. Before having done any cut in the femur and adjusting the femur the overall um, alignment and ligament balance. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.